After killing three people in a drug-induced incident of road rage, James, which is not his real name, was sentenced to life without parole. He is serving his sentence at the maximum security Indiana State Prison in Michigan City, Indiana. Antonio was the chief enforcer of a notorious Chicago street gang. He spent 25 years on death row and is still incarcerated at the Danville Correctional Facility in Danville, Illinois. Kent was in and out of prison since the age of 14, abused by his drug-addicted single mother. He never finished high school. An attempted armed robbery put him behind bars at the Westville Correctional Facility in Westville, Indiana. He will be released in four years. And that might be the end of the story. Three lives which have caused pain, suffering, and even ended lives. Three people who deserve to be in prison for their terrible deeds. What hope is there for Kent or James or Antonio? Society calls them losers, felons, convicts, and that's often how they see themselves. If they ever leave prison, they will be marked men, men not to be trusted, ex-cons, likely to just end up back behind bars for another crime. But their story has taken an unexpected turn. They met someone in prison who changed everything. They have met Jesus Christ. They have met someone who knows what it's like to be reckoned a criminal and knows what it means to pay the price, even to the point of execution. But best of all, James and Antonio and Kent and many others behind bars have met someone who can give them the greatest gift of all, the graciously given gift of forgiveness for all their sins. They remain bound, but are truly free in Christ. Like many offenders, Kent and Antonio and James have little or no experience with faith in Christ and the Word of God, the Bible. In the unforgiving culture of prison, their faith in Jesus is often tried by doubts, fears, weakness, and temptations. Many of our students tell us that they connect deeply to the closing words of Psalm 88. You have taken me from friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. Even in Christ, is there really hope for James or Antonio or Kent? There is. Hope that only God can give. Divine hope. Hope rooted in God's promises in the Bible. Divine Hope Reformed Bible Seminary is privileged to help men like James and Kent and Antonio discover the riches of hope in God, in his Son Jesus Christ, and in his Word, the Bible. This happens through a seminary program inside prison. A seminary behind bars is not a new idea. The pioneer in prison seminary programs began 20 years ago at the Louisiana State Prison in Angola, Louisiana. Warden Burl Kane believed that spiritual and moral transformation through Christian seminary education could transform his 5,500 inmates. And it did. Violence at Angola dropped 80%. Recidivism went from 66% to 17%. This means that the chances of someone like Kent returning to prison went from 2 in 3 to 1 in 5. There is hope in Christ, behind bars and on the outside. Divine Hope Reform Bible Seminary is about giving this kind of hope. Divine Hope's program offers a full range of seminary coursework for believing men and women in prisons in Indiana and Illinois. In classrooms behind the razor wire at these four prisons, Divine Hope students are enrolled in a variety of programs tailored to meet their spiritual, moral, emotional, and educational needs. Courses range from Bible study in Romans, to the history of the Reformation, to Greek, to biblical counseling, to how to preach, and many more. What ties all the courses together is a centering on the Bible as God's Word and a deep joy in the promises of God so richly proclaimed in Reformed faith. The fall semester of 2015 marked the start of Divine Hope Seminary's fourth year. 165 inmate students were enrolled in Divine Hope courses. The seminary's three full-time professors, Rev. Nathan Brummel, Rev. Ken Anima, and Rev. Paul Ipema, and volunteer instructor John Sorowick, teach these courses. 
But their classroom work is just the beginning. Divine Hope's faculty get to know their students, counseling them, encouraging them, praying with them, and seeking to connect seminary students with local churches and mentors. Let our students tell you about their Divine Hope experience in their own words. There is a darkness in prison, but God, who said, let light shine out of darkness. Having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose hope. Fellow Christian brothers and sisters, look to your past, see how far you have come. At one time, we were the darkness, now we are light. We all have value, don't let anyone diminish it. Find something to live for every day. Encourage one another every day. Pray for one another every day. Because every life, even an LWAP, a life without parole, is a life worthy of prayer. Stay in the Word. It is the lamp that lights our path as we walk as Christians of life. My journey into divine hope began as a young man, probably the youngest person in the seminary at that time, but coming into, the, into divine hope, I was seeking several things. One of the things that I was seeking was to obtain a better knowledge of the Holy Scriptures. Another thing was to prove to myself, others within this camp, as well as family and friends, that positive change could come from within someone who was labeled <clears throat> a lost member to society. And the third and most important was to attain a better relationship with God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Never being in the college setting, some things came easy, but more than a little bit, I found some of the studies to be tedious and just flat out hard. Uh, biblical languages was my biggest challenge, but I made my professors a deal that if they would teach me to read, learn, and speak Hebrew and Greek, that I would teach them street slang, but that didn't go too well. <laughs> um, um, I won't sit here and try to paint a pretty picture because that's Tim Robinson's job, but uh, we had our days when we agreed and when we also disagreed. When, uh, and we had days when we were just plain old tired of writing, memorizing, writing again and memorizing again, but by the grace of God, we overcame. Participating in divine hope by the change within myself that to this day, I'm still shocked manifested in a young man who spent most of his life being angry. I built walls and I continued to build those walls higher and higher as I grew in my life. But uh, Genesis 50, 20 states that what Satan meant for bad, God meant for good. Myself, the gentleman sitting here today, and so many others around can testify that indeed, what Satan meant for bad, our God, he took it, he changed it, he turned it around, and he made it for good. Thank you. Divine Hope Reformed Bible Seminary provides these programs at no cost to our students. We receive no funds from the Departments of Correction. This ministry is made possible by the generosity of people like you, the churches you attend, and businesses that believe in giving back to their communities. Thank you for supporting Divine Hope Seminary with your prayers and your funds. So, how does James and Antonio's and Kent's story end? The ultimate outcome of their stories is the same as yours. Liberation from the bondage of sin in eternal life with Jesus Christ, fully transformed into his glorious likeness. But where are James and Antonio and Kent in this story today? James is one of Divine Hope's best students, hungry for more of God's truth. Antonio is a leader, not of a street gang, but of a Bible study on his cell block, with younger believing prisoners turning to him for godly counsel. Kent looks forward to getting out so that he can give back to the community which he used to victimize proclaiming the power of the gospel to change lives and giving hope to young people.